Durango, like many other mountain towns, is extremely expensive. I couldn't afford anything. I couldn't really even afford rent. And so a friend knew that I was looking for a cheap piece of land in the mountains and I wanted to build a cabin. That was my dream. And she saw this thing about tiny houses one day and I never heard of them. And she sent the link to me and I saw that and I'm like, that is the perfect solution to my problem. This house, Jacob's one of my former employees. This is actually his second house that he's building. The house behind him is the first house I ever built back in 2011. And I lived in that one for five years. This house in the Quonset hut, which is our primary building facility, that's going to San Diego. It'll be done in about five days. This house, it's a retired couple in Denver. They just wanted to get out of the city and they bought some land so that was this house. It's called the Durango model since it was where I started the business. It's the first house I ever built. And back then, this is, this is the age of Jay Schaefer. You know, that's, that design was supreme. You know, the tumbleweed houses. And back, there just wasn't a whole lot of inspiration in other builds. It's, it's, it was, they were all kind of modeled after this style, but I put my own touch on it, the corrugated a rusty metal. Yeah, I lived in that one for five years. And then one year of which was with a wife and an extra dog. <laughs> this house was never designed for two people and two dogs. We made it work while we were building a larger tiny house. Hi, baby. How are you? Oh, well, how's work? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how work is. Yeah, one of those days. <laughs> I had like a million faces. So that was build number one. The new house is about number 75, so I've learned a few things between the two. She had this joke of doing a tiny house show. The yeah. house, tiny house wives or something? The real tiny house wives. The real tiny house wives, making fun of the we Orange County. Need, <laughs> we don't need to make up drama. <laughs> we built this ourselves, and this was like a collaboration of both of our tastes. We disagree a lot. There was a lot of headbutting, for sure. Yeah, it was super stressful. <laughs> it was a process. We wanted to do lots of really cool details. We wanted to make it really unique. So we have the TV already out of the way for to lower. Yeah. It's kind of loud. We knew we wanted to do an elevator bed because our other tiny house we lived, we had a lofted bed with a ladder and it was Greg's like first build. Oh. I fell from that once. Oh. And then it just locks like that. So this is just a chain hoist. Greg came up with all these parts. I think some of these are garage door it's parts. It's all garage door parts. But we wanted it to be manual in case we ever didn't have power. <laughs> you can hop up too if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think we put four people on here just to test it. Oh. Wow. I like my grandfather, a mechanical engineer. My dad was a mechanic, so I've always been into mechanical stuff and tinkering. So I really enjoyed the aesthetics. You wanted to cover this whole thing. I wanted to put a box around it. Because when it first came in, I was like, oh my God, that's the first thing you see when you walk in our house. But now I don't care. So the hoist mechanism, it's geared down. Because this is probably about 200 pounds. If this was just a straight cable, you could not, it would lift you off the ground, right? So this is geared down six to one. So that 200 pounds goes down to about 33. That's how much force it takes to lift it. But it takes longer, but it makes it time. It's really not that bad. I'm not saying it wrong. So the hoist has a drum that pulls the cable. It rotates the axle. And then the axle goes to four pulleys. Instead of having the elevator bed just piece of plywood, we wanted to stare at something really pretty, and so we made that southwest motif. And we go to about right there. And that took us like a week. <laughs> took a while. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Obviously, the doggies' beds under here. Pull out at night. This just the, hinges up for extra storage. Some storage behind here. And then, like, the, the armrests back, hinge the up. Laptop, storage. I did a lot of at home workouts under here during quarantine. She did. I would do like full, I can do burpees in here. I can do. She's in the house shaking, doing her workout. <laughs> and then this slides out. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so interesting. interesting. Yeah, it does a lot of things. Yeah. So like this is our dining space. And then obviously I use this for extra, like when there's a bunch of dishes, which can happen. Yeah. 
it goes all, and it just comes straight out. It's not in there at all. I just waxed it, just waxed the butcher block so it just fits right in there. How did you make sure the, it's not going to wear out? It, you it's just really that. hard wood. Yeah, Aww. this is mesquite, which is super, super hard. Just it hasn't that. worn a bit after two years yeah. of use. So it's and then after you wax this, it gets real smooth. Okay. But typically, yeah, I mean, I don't really like this. Would be our normal configuration, yeah. just eating dinner. That's how we eat. So, yeah. can you show me the axe? Like, how does that work inside there? Is there a there's literally nothing there? So, there's just a pocket in the, the way I built the cabinet. This is yeah. floating with su it's supported in the back and on the side, and okay. that's all it takes. And it's just so heavy. What's the wax called that I use? It's just it's like just, uh, cabinet wax, can wax, or something, or beeswax, or something. Yeah. How did you come with the idea? Another builder did a house that she really liked. Oh, the Portland and hipsters. They had, they had a counter that was like kind of this shape where you, you yeah. sit there. But yeah, it was so like it was a fixed. It would just like shape. come like this. So she wanted that, but I couldn't get it to fit. And I'm like, well, how about we do this rotating table thing that we can put it out of the way when we don't need it, but then slide down when we do. Yeah. So, I mean, just, it still sticks out a little bit. But the idea of using wax, is that like a ski thing? Because you wax no, your ski? I, no, I, it was like canning just, wax. It was something that I bought at the grocery store. I think she Googled it. We yeah. first put it in and it didn't slide very well at yeah. all. And she looked up something. Well, because we were like this wax building the drawers and stuff too. And our drawers back there, those aren't on slides. Just that's cut a dado. What, yeah, and it's just a wood strip back and there. Strip, so. And that's what you do for like an old dresser that was all wood without slides. And then it lets your drawers be an inch wider. Every inch matters, so. <laughs> I've got mine. Oh, we also have pantry. This is totally Double like, with so much stuff and it's not super organized right now, but. And then they are both on different slides, but yeah, you can see we have a lot of food storage. <laughs> I organize it every once in a while. Yeah, this is, it's a real tiny house living there. Yeah. This is Greg's closet, but I made him put all the utilities in his closet. Right. And there's all our solar equipment, batteries. Of course, Greg wanted to make a cool custom sliding barn door. And then we did this like plexiglass so that the light, light. Um, comes through, but you still have your privacy. Scandalous. <laughs> yep. And then we have a full tub. The bathroom's big. Yeah, we have a big, well, and that's because we built out onto the tongue of the trailer. So this is a 24 foot trailer, but it feels like a 26 foot because we did that. We were able to fit a tub in here, a full bathroom vanity, and then our toilet. For a 24 foot trailer, she wanted a little bit bigger than that, but I was trying to keep it a little smaller to make it easier to tow. So kind of the compromise was, we'll cheat a little bit. So we'll do the Venos, come out over the tongue, steal some space, and then I'm just tinkering. And I'm like, well, what if I do that? And then I tilt the wall that way. So it goes up that way too. So even though the trailer is 24 feet, the ridge beam is 29 feet. Oh, so wow. it's five feet longer yeah. at the top. We might be of uh, an old school boat, but, like a yeah. galleon. We get that all the time. We get that, all the time. Like that was not the intent. It yeah, it's a mess. We call it the prow of the ship. The prow? Yeah. <laughs> it's our storage, our storage loft. So we keep camping gear. We got sleeping bags, pads. Oh. You can well from here. You can actually see the curve, the whole curve of the roof. There what did you do that. then? Is that just curved wood? Well, it's complicated. It's locally <laughs> milled aspen, and we had them mill it really thin. The trick is running the boards at a forty-five degree angle, okay. and so they wrap. It's kind of like wrapping a, a straight strip around an orange. When you run it at an angle, it allows it to conform to the geometry of the roof. We're getting the height where we need it over the loft and we're coming back down where we don't need the height. It's wavy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is It is a gable, but it's, it's varying. The pitch is always changing. It's almost like a leaf. Nature designs are look like that a little bit or like Gaudi-esque, like na nature shaping. There's the prow. This, this was one of the harder sections to do just to jump it's double it's a compound angle meeting a curved roof so it was a lot of trial and error just like cut a board mark it cut it again and then mark it like every board three or four times before i get them to fit just right this was lap cedar you know traditional clapboard that i had left over from a project and the boards had like cupped real bad and i ran them through the planer and flattened them out so that was free wood but this again reclaimed corrugated 
You know, when I first put it in, I thought it would be a, a rectangular cut on the metal, but no, there's a big angle here and a big angle here. And I just had to figure it out. Probably went through two or three pieces before I'm like, oh, that's why. I think on the siding, about 90% of it is reclaimed or repurposed. On this side, it's all just cedar shakes that I bought at a, a contractor sale for like pennies on the dollar. And I'd had them for years and they were just, but they were pre-primed. They weren't uh, stained or just raw. So we had to paint them. And since we're going to paint them, we're like, well, let's do a, something different. Steph went and picked seven shades of blue. So this side reclaimed corrugated and I had that. It was here in my shop. Being a builder has its perks. <laughs> The reason I did the shakes at the top is it's easier to cut an angle at one angle at a time rather than having a big sheet and cutting having to scribe that curve. So I was able to keep them pretty tight. And so again, that roof, there's a reason for it in every part. There, it is functional. You know, like I said, it's it's mimicking a dormer roof, but getting rid of the break, and just smoothing it out into a curve, getting the height where we need it and coming lower where we don't need it. It's so funny how it, it feels so much bigger because the walls aren't straight. They're yeah, if we, I mean, the wall should end here. We wouldn't have like half of our shower. We wouldn't have our vanity. <laughs> yeah, this tub is so comfortable. Yeah, I love it, love it. Yeah, and then Greg built this out of RV shower rod and just made all these so that we could have a curtain. Just like something that like, they don't make things for that, but Greg can figure it out. <laughs> And then I wanted to be able to do, you know, I don't always like to dry my laundry at the laundromat. So, cause we don't have washer dryer here. So I had my little hook here. This is our hundred gallon off grid water tank and there's the water line. And oh, so yeah. we made it so that we could see the water line. So you so, know when the water is running out. Yes. So you can't take a shower when it's down here. You can do dishes, but no shower. That's our big outdoor tank. So that fits on my, my flat bed. It's just tilted cause we're getting low and we're trying to just get the last little bit out. How much can you fit in there? That's 330 gallons. So we'll get three tank fills because that's 100 gallons in the house. 100 gallons will probably last us about eight to 10 days. So this will last about a month. When you live off grid, you use less water. You're more conscious of it. You take shorter showers and you know, you do your dishes a little differently. And, <laughs> and then we chose the freezer bottom cool. fridge just so that we could not have to bend over and tall. So off grid. Run, everything's run off our solar. Wow, and, and is this a fridge specially made for that? Yeah. It's just a normal Yeah, it's just a normal fridge. And as you can see, we have 24 inch range. Yeah. And then, we love this stove. It's the dwarf. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so you get yeah. tiny pieces of wood in yeah. there. Yeah, sure. Here I got, yeah. so all our wood stays in the winter. Right. All just scraps from the shop. But I like how small it is because, I, you know, it just fits in the space better. But uh, it's enough to heat this? It's Definitely. more than enough. Yeah. I kind of like homes that are a little bit broken into and, you know, 100-year-old homes that have some character. Worn edges. And yeah. yeah. That window? Was oh, it expensive? Is it, so yeah. well, it was supposed to cost like $4,000 from the factory. And then I was like, well, I still want my Hobbit window. And Greg was like, yeah, I could probably do that. So I made the frame first. You see that I've got segments here. You find the center point and you mount a bar with your router out here. And your router just goes around and cuts the circle inside and outside. So I had to make the frame. The jam was a different process. I had this made. So this, you can kind of see right there how thin that layer is. Mm -hmm. So this is a bunch of thin strips. They're cut like an eighth inch thick and I've got like six of them. And they're all wrapped around and glued and clamped. The trim was made the same way as this. You have like an octagon, you just use a router to cut the, the circumference basically. So how much time did that take? All together, that whole thing is probably five, six days of work. Yeah. That's why it's time, $4,000. And for yes. you, what did it cost in parts? I mean, materials, and... probably 500 bucks. Yeah. When I first moved, the old house was parked where the chicken coop is. But this house would not fit right there. And just the logistics of getting it in and out, this was kind of the only spot that fit. But this is part of my lease, this, this little spot we're on. 
I've been at this location for six years now. It's a total mess, right? We're so busy. This time of year is the absolute busiest time of year. We'll have three going at once, sometimes four. This house, right now it's just a shell. We had to, uh, I had to put everybody on that one to get it out of the, you know, we had a deadline on that one. So we'll do that when we get pinched. But when they finish that, then everyone's gonna come on this one and it's gonna go probably finish in like four weeks. This is SIPS, structural insulated panel. So they're all pre-cut from the factory. The benefits of SIPS, they insulate a little better than stick frame. They're extremely strong, like ridiculously strong. And I like them as a builder because they go up really fast. This is a two day shell to get an insulated framed shell, two days. Stick frame would be at least a week on a house this size. And pricing? It's about the same. Assuming I can get multiple projects on one truck, that's the trick. Because uh, freight, okay. freight is the killer on SIPs. Okay. If I'm paying for a 48 foot flatbed and I've only got one house on there, it's gonna be expensive. But if I can, I can fit six, so the more I get, the cheaper freight becomes per house. And I had four on this order, so it's actually the same price as stick frame. If I'm able to get three or more on a truck, then it definitely saves money. We've got enough projects going that I buy lumber in bulk. You know, if you go to Home Depot or something, you're going to be buying just two by fours and stuff. But if you're doing like this is maple, nicer maple. So that's all raw boards. You have, you know, raw edges. Usually this is rough cut. If you see down that edge, you see it's not straight at all. So when you're buying hardwoods, that's this is how they come. So you have to, to run it through the joiner, which will get you a straight edge here. There are some places where you can sell a board that's already been milled, but it's really expensive. We don't have a lumber yard that sells that, so we have to buy it raw and mill it ourselves. When you have to do, when you have a board that's really wavy, you have to run it a few times. I can buy a bunk. I don't just buy 42 by fours anymore. I'll buy, you know, 300 of them at a time. We just, I'm starting to buy more and more things in bulk and that does trickle down and, and save customer money, so. Okay. So this wood is really hard and my blades are kind of dull, as you could hear. And it would need one more pass to get it completely smooth and flat. But once we do that, like if we're doing a, like a glued up counter and we can mix and match our woods and we can, and we can pick the boards we want. We'll never be a huge builder. We do about 15 a year. And there's people doing a hundred or more a year. So I'll, I'll never, I don't ever want to be at that scale because we're custom, we're full custom. She wanted very, very low maintenance. So that's why you see a lot of tiny houses go in metal. Once it's up there, this will last. 50 years without doing a thing to it it's going to fade a little bit but is that roofing normally it's normally it's used for roofing yes but you can use it for siding um we've been doing a lot of metal lately we just finished a house and went to vegas it was a hundred percent metal on the outside because she was afraid of the sun damaging wood yeah. most people that come to me have a pretty darn good idea of what they're looking for they're well educated they've done a lot of homework they looked at other builders they looked at a hundred plans Pinterest board, you name it. They've looked at it all. She just wants stairs instead of a ladder or an elevator bed. There's an older couple, so they didn't want to deal with ladders. And if you're going to have stairs, well, it's going to have built-in storage of some form. So she'll just have closet, pull-out pantry. We do a lot of those. You got to have, I think they're a necessity, really, for tiny houses. And then the fridge rounds it up, and then you're under the loft. But they'll just be a, a queen. It's sized for a queen size mattress. And people love beetle kill wood here in Colorado because it's actually pretty cheap too. It's one of the cheaper woods, but it's gorgeous. Yeah. Same stuff on the ceiling. And beetle kill being... There's a beetle that will eat either pine or spruce. Some people have figured out how to harvest it. It's a form of sustainable forestry because you're cutting out dead standing trees. It's just a fold out table. It's gonna mount on the end. So it's just two people and they can look out the door and it folds down and just store out of the way. This one's a 22 plus seven gooseneck. 
you're starting to see a bit more gooseneck designs. People always ask me, why would you want a gooseneck? There's really only one reason. If you're towing it yourself a lot, because they, they're safer to tow. Bumper pulls are more affordable. The gooseneck trailers, you know, when you do all this, well, the trailer chassis is a lot more, building around the neck is, costs more. They're harder, yeah, they're more complicated, and it adds cost to the build. So, like I said, the only reason I recommend doing them is if you plan on towing it yourself a lot. I think she wants to do a traveling nurse, because right now she's a full-time and she wants to switch over to traveling. Okay. Okay. She had the same concerns as the other lady, uh, maintenance, but she did add a lot more wood. Just aesthetically, she couldn't handle that much metal. You know, it was too industrial, so we put cedar tongue groove. Yeah, just moving, having to move a light fixture. She didn't like where it was, so we're having to move it over a little bit. Wow, what did yeah. you send photos? And we FaceTime so they can see everything. Because they can't come here necessarily, they're all over the country. You know, originally the upper cabinets were white and we had a FaceTime. And she's like, you know, they're too, it's too white. Let's paint the uppers as well. So we can make decisions on the fly. Always got some stuff. Barn door for the bathroom. So this door is tucked in, it's like pocketed in yeah. to the door so you don't lose the width. It's amazing, you can't lose an inch. It's huge. But she'll have a full, you know, 30 by 60 tub. These are little things, like she wanted a little extra space to do her makeup. So just something as small as that is, makes a big difference in such a small space. Drawers built in here too. The top is. It'd be a really skinny little door, so we just made it a flip top instead. You get standing room. I'm 5'10, I can fit up here. Um, she's short, she's 5'2, like, so she can fit in on the low side, she won't hit her head. She'll have platform storage, but once the mattress is on here, she'll be able to use this as storage. This is a nice touch. You guys will be the first to see it. She hasn't even seen it yet. Uh, yeah. Super healthy. She picked it out. Yeah. I think she even ordered it and sent it, had it just sent here. And everything. She picked that light fixture out. Yeah, this is all closet space. The washer dryer is actually going to fit here. What's the siding in here? Shiplap. And we mill this here. The traditional shiplap you can buy from Home Depot, it's MDF. So it's real heavy and it's, it's just, it smells. And so we, we get like a sanded plywood and cut it and it's only three eighths thick. So it's thinner too. So we get more, a little bit more space, a little less weight. How, how wide is this? Well, this, this is two foot four inches right here. You can go down to two, two feet, but the trick, the trailer itself is eight foot four. And that's where we put that four inches is right here. And normally on an eight foot trailer, we only get about two feet, 24 inches. So instead of feeling like that, that extra four inches is a big, big difference in this hallway right here. You're not knocking your elbows. I draw to a quarter of an inch and you have to. Like I draw, I draw the thickness of the wall because that affects where the cabinets are gonna go. And they have to fit around the wheel well. So you, gotta, you have to draw to a quarter inch. The wheel well is here. It's like I was saying, a double axle is six feet long, plus a little bit of framing to get it insulated. This is a huge, huge problem with tiny houses is how do you deal with the wheel wells? Yeah, we do a lot of stuff like this. When you don't need it, bam, out of the way. So if your layout has your cooking appliance over the wheel well, this is the easy solution. Have a separate cooktop and a separate oven. No, I think we're should dishwash your drawer. They're kind of pricey, but they're small, 24 inch. It's just one person. He's putting in a built-in couch and that's the frame. He's just dry fitting it, make sure it's not too tight. Go. I took an eighth off. Yeah. yeah, that's a little snug. So that's how that's how tight you have to build these things. <laughs> this little thing began its life as a uh, camper. You ever seen those little uh, snowmobile trailers? Yeah. So I bought one of those for 200 bucks, and I built this on top of it. So it wasn't meant to be a tiny house, just a, a camping trailer, camping and hunting. And my office used to be in the old house and I reached a point where it got too big. So I repurposed this thing for the office. So this is where all the design, everything, sales, bookkeeping, everything happens right here. Got a lot on my plate for sure. So yes, this is the house that's in the pole barn right now, the SIP house. We'll pull up the very first drawing. So the very first version of our house, that's what it looked like, like the windows. That's how they were designed and built. 
you have all these segmented pieces that get glued. So that was like the frame, that was the trim. That was our drawers, all the measurements on our drawers. We were playing with variations on the siding on the back, you know, trying to warp the stuff. There's the doors. That is my formal training is architecture. That's my degree. So I love the drawing, drafting part. I draw to a quarter of an inch and you have to. Then when I, once I do it in CAD, then I put it in SketchUp after I, I get happy. And you know, this doesn't have every single detail, mm. but it has enough. And that's where you see the curve. That's how that kind of mm -hmm. plays in the shape. So that shows you how the roof is framed. If you want to know how to build that curve, <laughs> that's how it's done. That kind of, yeah, that shows you the shape of that front, front wall. So actually the, um, the walls are sips too. Luckily they cut all those angles for me because they're all compound. It would have been a nightmare to try mm -hmm. to stick frame this thing. And they cut that, that was all cut from the factory. Okay. So this is the drawing I sent the SIP company. Mm -hmm. It shows you the radius, mm -hmm. all of the critical dimensions. Mm -hmm. So before we even got here, so you know, Steph, Steph drew that. And I was thinking of ideas. These are all great. <laughs> this is just me. Like, I kept them all. Still farting around. Like, that was the wave concept. We ended up doing that on the back. Oh, and that would have been cool. I was thinking of doing the whole front as like a sunburst. <laughs> oh, on this side, yeah, this is a cool feature. So this this whole wall of barnwood right here, it's it's arranged in a sun ray, like a sunburst, where they you know the rays radiate. It's a radial type pattern, and it's all based on the portholes. So you see the portholes are concentric to the curve of the roof. And then we made the wood siding line up with that too. I didn't want it square. I didn't want another box, right? Like every tiny house is just a box with a shed roof. And so we wanted to make it a little bit different because we could, like we have the time, like no one really wants to pay for that. And we did lots of cool custom details in here as well. Yeah. Penny floor, it's $80 in pennies. My back still hurts from this because <laughs> I laid each one individually with silicone and then we epoxied over it. There's a, a, a quote, I think Frank Lloyd Wright said it. He said something like, design a chicken coop as if you would design a house. Like put that much attention into it. I didn't put quite that much, but this is all leftover drops. It's all leftover parts. Except, you know, except for the, that, I had to buy the hog wire. So we have bears here and our old chicken coop got destroyed by a bear. But this thing, I mean, it is, it is really solid. The roof is like six inch uh, metal panels. So I designed it. So the chickens have, a, it's like a Dutch door. They have their door and this is the human door so we can get in here and clean it out and grab the eggs. That's an automatic door. So we don't have to let them in and out. It's got a little light sensor. Oh look, we got some eggs. So they got their, their nesting roost. They've got boxes, but they don't use them. <laughs> they prefer. So we get fresh eggs here. <laughs> it's so weird we're in town, but you would never know it. Yeah. We're like five minutes away from everything. It's awesome. Durango is yeah, really yeah. expensive. To buy a house here, you'd spend like 350,000 on like a total dump that needs a complete renovation. Like you could spend that much on a freaking trailer. The parking's still kind of hard, parking's tricky. But I just rode my bike around town and looked for vacant lots that looked like they'd be a good place to park a house. It's a completely different story now today, seven years later. Island Cove RV Park. They're not a tiny house specific. It's a mobile home park, but they're very welcoming to tiny houses. They want tiny houses. So every time that a mobile home or an old trailer is leaving, they try to replace it with a tiny house. They change the fabric of that community. You want to do it? No, you do it. You can just do it fast because your hands are tough. Well, yeah, you can let it down nice and easy, or you can just let it go. It feels really good to have a space that I feel really comfortable in. Like, I like the feng shui of my house. Like, other people don't like it, but it's not theirs or whatever. But this is where, you know, for me, that's where I can, like, restore my energy.